Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, I want to talk about why we removed our free apps from the App Store. <laughs> Okay, so a few days ago, I mentioned that we started removing all of our free apps from the App Store, from the Apple App Store. So, um, it, not for all of them. Some of them actually do pretty well with in-app purchases or through ads. So we've kept a few of the free ones, but the most of them, we've gotten rid of them, right? So, and, and I want to talk a little bit more about that today. So I got a, a comment uh, a few days ago on episode 331 from Kirill who said, Eric, didn't quite get why did you remove free apps from the App Store? If they aren't making any money from ads, they still don't require any time or efforts to maintain them. Why not just forgetting them? And this is a really good question. In fact, this was a question we asked a few weeks ago saying, is it even worth removing something from the app store? Why not just keep them there because they don't take any maintenance, they're there, they might, you know, people might download them and purchase them at any point and you might as well leave them on the shelf if you can. So the answer to that question is, is because Apple started rejecting some of my apps. So, and, I, and I, I've talked about this so much in the past couple of weeks, I don't want to keep belaboring the point, but you know, 4.3 has been a real issue with me for the past you know, six months or so. So I, I released an app a couple of weeks ago and they, it was rejected even though it wasn't like any of the other ones on, the, on, on my account. So I, I appealed that, was back and forth a little bit and they approved it. But the reason that they they rejected it, I don't think it had a lot to do with the, the, my other apps in the App Store because they obviously weren't looking at any of the other ones. It had to do with the fact that I had too many apps, right? And I've talked to other app developers who have the same kind of thing. You know, and, and I have some clients, and I, I, I don't know if I should say this, but I have, I have some clients who, you know, they release, they, they do like events and stuff like that. So we'll release an app and we'll use the same, the same framework and everything to release it. And I kept thinking, you know, I don't know if this is going to go through anymore because they're getting really bad with 4.3 and th this might be rejected. But then we put it out there, right? And it just gets approved. And I'm like, surprised. I'm like, wow, I didn't think this would go through. And, you know, I, I, I put it through the app store. I said, let's just see if this goes through. Although we are working on container apps for them and everything, but... You know, but no, no problem because they only have like a handful of apps, right? And I had like a hundred or something like that. I don't even know how many it is. And then, so I started thinking about it. I started thinking, uh, cause I was talking to somebody else who had to go through and, and delete like half of their apps because, you know, because they were having all this problem with 4.3, right? Uh, and so I thought the same thing. Maybe I just have to go through and remove some, but I really don't want to because they, they're, some of them are making money. Some of them don't make as much money as they could, but they do make some. So, so I started looking at how can I reduce that? And I started realizing, well, for every app that we do, we do a free version and a paid version. So we have the free version with in-app purchases and ads, and we got the paid version. So I started looking at the Apple side in terms of which one makes more money for me. And it's, for me, it's always the, the paid apps make more money than the in-app purchases do, right? And I think, the, I think having the free apps, maybe that's causing less people to actually purchase the full version anyway, because you know, they, they have time to try it out. And maybe, you know, they, they never get around to, to upgrading even if they do like it. So, as an experiment, we went through and just said, I just said, let's just go through and, uh, and remove from sale all of the free ones except for the big ones that, that make some money. So, and then the next day, we have like one of the biggest sales days that we had in ages. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the stats here, right? But the, re the answer to the question, Kirill, and I answered it in the, in the reply to the comment, is I didn't want to do that. I, you know, I would rather just leave all the apps there, right? I, w I want anyone to download one of our apps and not have to pay for it if they don't want to, so they could try it out, everything first, but you know, if this is Apple, right? So have a look at my screen. I'll show you what the stats are like. So I thought, I thought everything would go down. I thought sales would either go up or they would go down, but they wouldn't stay the same. So here's a, have a look at my screen here. Here's the last um, month. So basically I went to the 1st of April, to the uh, 2nd of May, which was like just a, like a week after we, we made this change, right? And you can see here the units where we had this kind of, like some of you guys get a lot of downloads and a lot of revenue. So for, for me on the Apple side, not so much. So what I'm showing you here is not to show off, I'm just saying, I'm just showing you what, what, how we do. So we've got all these uh, downloads, it was around, you know, seven or 800 pretty much consistently. 
And then once we made that change down here, we dropped to about you know, 500, 600 each day. So we saw a drop in downloads, which is expected because we got rid of the free ones. Now, we have a few, we have a few free ones that get most of the downloads and those are still there. So if I go over here to sales, uh, you see, uh, by the way, we have sales and proceeds. I only ever look at proceeds because one is 30% less than the other one, but let's go to sales here. So you can see that you know, while we had a few days here, this was a day uh, right here uh, where we, that was the next day after we made the change, right? And it was such a big leap that I thought, oh my God, everything's gonna get so much better now because we removed the free apps, you know, and I, and I couldn't wait to tell you guys about it. I couldn't wait to tell you that this was a secret to all of it. And then, sure enough, just a couple days later, it drops down to you know to twenty dollars in sales. Let me just go to proceeds because uh, show how much money it's actually made. So here you see that one day we made fifty three dollars. By the way, when when I say I'm not an app millionaire, I am not an app millionaire, but I make a good living. This and AdMob and the ad networks and Google Google Wallet, all that kind of stuff, it all goes into the same pot. So, but here you drop down to fourteen dollars, right? Fourteen dollars. I made fourteen dollars on the, in, of that on that day. So and then it, it, it jumped back up again, and it seems to be the same cyclical nature. So getting rid of the free apps did not have a lot of impact on the paid app, apps here. So let me just show you here going down. Now a lot of so you see my top my top purchases here are in-app purchases, right? It's just so uh, these two are still there. This one is not, so that's going to drop off but a lot of what we do is app bundles. So I talked about this once before, and I probably should do another video on it, because if you do uh, Apple applications, if you do apps on the App Store, and you have a lot of them that are similar to each other, you should sell them as a bundle as well, because some people would just want to uh, purchase the bundle. However, if you have a lot of apps that are similar to each other, you might not get them approved, so it's a you know, chicken and egg. But if you do have this kind of situation, so, so we started putting a lot of them into bundles and started making purchases that way. So anyway, just to, you know, not to go on about this too much, just to answer it. Yeah, we did remove most of the free apps from the, from the app store. So if anybody wants to try one of the apps, they have to make the purchases. It was either that or just go with free apps with, uh, with the in-app purchases. But we're trying this first so you know, we can always go back through we removed it from sale the nice thing is if we put it back on sale we don't have to go through the review process again but it was just it was it's an experiment i think i'll let you guys know if, if anything if this really takes off like i notice month on a monthly basis that the revenue goes up i'm definitely going to tell you guys about it but this is this is why we're doing it now so anyway that's it for today i'll talk to you guys tomorrow